Welcome to Real Vision Crypto. I'm Ash Bennington. Today, we're talking about data, privacy, and digital assets with Sebastian Bergel of Hopper. Sebastian, welcome to Real Vision Crypto. Thanks, Ash, for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to you about topics that I'm quite passionate about, about privacy and the digital asset space. Well, it's really a pleasure to have you. Sebastian, before we get started talking about that, tell us a little bit about your academic background. It's a very interesting one. So some people are surprised that when I say that I do not have a cryptography background, but you know, uh, crypto is one of the few fields that actually does not come out of university. So I guess it's quite normal. So my background is actually in microelectronics. And uh, I did a PhD in postdoc here at ETH Zurich in Switzerland on microfabrication for biomedical applications. So we were basically using this ever faster evolving uh, micro technology um, pipeline that uh, actually allows you to build really cheap devices for biomedical applications, for cancer research, for drug research on uh, human parasites and, and others. So yeah. That was quite interdisciplinary in my, in my education before I got into crypto. And, and for people who may not know, particularly for an American audience, ETH is one of the premier uh, science and engineering uh, universities in Switzerland. It's like 150 years old, established by the government to do basic analytic research uh, on these fields. So obviously, it's a, it's a very impressive background. And it's, it's also a fascinating theme that I think we see here in crypto. Uh, people with advanced degrees in very sophisticated science and math-related subjects. So tell us the story about your transition uh, from doing that into crypto. Oh, yeah. Um, so I got exposed originally to Bitcoin in late 2013. There was this bull market of late 2013 when everybody thought it's too late, you know, and then like this really brutal crash of 2014. So then, you know, I thought I would be a good trader, but it turned out it was just the bull market. And I was, in fact, a pretty bad trader. <laughs> and then I pretty much forgot about um, about this whole crypto stuff for about a year until one of my friends uh, made me aware of this other system that was coming up there, which is called Ethereum. And since I've always been a coder, like since I was a teenager, I was basically coding on a daily basis. Um, Ethereum was quite interesting because you could not just move money left, right, but you could actually code money. And that was really something that, that really hit me. And that was really, really surprising to me. So I tried to play around with this thing called Ethereum. It was very messy. Nothing really worked, literally nothing. And, um, yeah, then I was so frustrated, but luckily there was a conference that was called Ethereum DEF CON 1 which coincidentally happened uh, the week after I defended my PhD. So, you know, I would be free to go to London and hang out with these people. Like there would be Christian Wright Wiesner, the developer of Solidity, who I could ask, you know, why does the compiler just say error to me? So, and then people got back to me and said, well, Sebastian, like, at least it says error now, like a week ago, it didn't <laughs> even say that. So it was very early in the space, but it was also very clear to me that at this moment in that was in in late 2015 that this would be the magic moment i'd been waiting for i always thought you know when dot com times hit me growing up in germany um i was just not really deeply exposed to it and i always thought if something like this comes around i'm going to drop everything and going to jump right in and to me being at defcon 1 uh, seeing all these great people talk about the visions of ethereum it was very clear to me that that would be that magic moment. It would be this new technology that would change everything that we know. So when you said when something like this comes around, what was it that you saw? What was it that was so compelling to you about this technology? Other than the letters ETH, I guess, from your university. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit weird, but I can pinpoint it to one line of code that really got me. And there was this one line of code which basically allowed you to store money in this variable in a smart contract. And the smart contract would be managing that money and only give it back to you if it was programmed to do so. And like that was so fundamentally new to me. That was so fundamentally weird that it was like, it, it was really my, my magic moment um, when I realized, okay, you can really not just program stuff 
that is, you know, random technology that shows you a color, a picture, some text, some numbers, but you could code money. You could really like instruct a smart contract to move assets around. And that was that was so different and that was so profound to me that I decided like it, this is really something significant that is worth educating myself much more about it and trying to get much deeper involved in this space. Yeah, it's fascinating that a single line of code was what captivated you and really changed the course of your entire life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I still remember I tried initially, I tried to bring in this kind of weird uh, part of the of this crypto um, into my academic research. And because, you know, there, there was a hackathon in late 2015, where I built actually a lab book that was based on top of IPFS and Ethereum. I tried to talk to my professor about it. He uh, told me to keep these rather esoteric things, maybe rather as a hobby instead of bringing it into research. <laughs> so it really kind of gave you a feeling for, you know, how, um, how, how this crypto asset stuff was seen back then in 2015. So, you know, I ultimately had to decide back, like by the time I had a postdoc position, there were three PhD students working with me and I decided I had to quit it all. That's the only way I could really you know, get where my passion is and get deep into crypto. So talk to us about the transition to Hopper. What was the need that you identified? What was the compelling use case that you saw that you felt you needed to bring into the world? Yeah, so there's there's quite a big gap between when I started uh, going all in in late 2015 and when we started Hopper really full time uh, in early 2020. So in the meantime, you know, in, in late 2015, people started talking about all these crazy applications, like one of them being the DAO, which was being talked about since like, uh, I guess, mid 2015. And I thought, you know, that back then it was too early. It was too early to build a product. So instead, um, I was starting to work as an educator. So initially, we, we were the first ones in continental Europe to give workshops on decentralized technologies like Ethereum and like other blockchains, teach people why that is an amazing technology, what smart contracts would be. And then uh, we would be asked to build actually something that was initially pretty weird. We were asked to code tokens and token sales. So that was when this uh, ICO wave in 2017 hit us real hard. So we would then pivot from pure education to kind of software development services. So we would be the first I would say in professional capacity, um, like developers of smart contract systems here in Europe. And uh, that was quite interesting because we got to, you know, basically I'm, I'm saying we, we tokenized basically everything that you can think of and um, built tokenization engines and stuff like that and started building truly decentralized applications. And that is pretty interesting because there would be, you know, most people came to us because they wanted a token and an ICO and they wanted it like within, they needed that stuff by tomorrow because they wanted to raise millions of dollars. That would be the standard theme. But there would be a few people who were actually interested in building truly decentralized applications. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.